Hey guys, I hope you're still with me. I know my lessons in quantum mechanics is not easy, but I hope you still persevere. I know some people have, have already given up on the course, but those who are still going through the lessons, we are almost there. We are almost reaching the end. Now, before we go into the devilish problem of the harmonic oscillator, we need to discuss one more problem, and that's the finite square potential. It's something like the infinite square potential that we handled a few lessons back, but let's just see what are the similarities and differences. So, the problem at hand is the finite square potential. Now, it involves a particle of mass n moving in the symmetric potential, v is equal to v0 for x less than minus a divided by 2, v equals to 0 for x between minus a divided by 2 to a divided by 2, and v0 for x greater than v, uh, uh, greater than a divided by 2. Now, I sketched out the potential over here. Now, as you can see, it should be obvious to you why it's called a well, because if you walked along this potential v0, you will drop inside the well over here, okay? The well is this region region x between minus a divided by 2 and a divided by 2. Uh, at the well, the potential is 0, but outside the well, the potential is v naught. Now, the two differences when you compare this with the unsymmetric infinite square potential is that the potential is not infinite, okay, it's finite as given by v naught over here, and it is symmetric about the point x equals to 0. So, uh, as compared to the unsymmetric where we shift the well away from the origin, this time the, the well is asymmetric, okay, and it's finite. So, that is what we have over there. Now, as always, when we are solving these physical problems, we need to isolate the two cases. And for us, and this problem, the two interesting cases is when the energy is greater than V0 and when the energy is greater than 0, but less than V0. Now, you should be experienced enough to see why I divided the energy levels like that. It's because if I start with the energy over here, which is less than V0, and, it's, and if I increase the energy above V0, there will be a sign change when I have V0 minus E. So, V0 minus the energy, there will be a sign change if I increase. V0 minus E will be positive with the energy level at this point. But at this point, it will be negative. So that's why I need to isolate the two different cases. That's how we solve all these physical problems. And we know from our discussion about bound and bound, bound and unbound states that when the energy is greater than V0, we get a continuous double degenerate energy spectrum. So the energy of the particle can take a continuous spectrum or a continuous range of values, and it'll be double degenerate simply because the solutions to the Schrodinger equation is a linear combination of two linearly independent solutions, which is e to the i k x and e to the minus i k x. So each of these solutions corresponds to the energy level. That's why it's double degenerate. Now, when this happens, we have what we call scattering solutions. Okay, scattering solutions. I do. Th I did think I did mention this for my uh, potential step, but I'll just mention it again. Scattering solutions. The other case is when the energy is less than v naught, we get a discrete non-degenerate energy spectrum, which um, the theorem tells us that. Now I did not show the theorem, but anyways, the theorem tells us that we get a discrete non-degenerate ed energy spectrum. So the energy of the particle can only take certain uh, discrete energy values. Okay, and this is what we call the bound state solutions. Bound state solutions. Okay, so really, uh, what type of solutions we get is dictated by the energy values or the two different cases, okay? Now, for today, we will look into the scattering solutions, which will take quite a while. I'm sorry, it will take quite, quite fast because this is not so interesting as compared to the bound state solutions, which are more interesting and which we will analyze in the next video. Alright, so what do we have over here? Now, the, the case where the energy is greater than the potential V0. Now, again, we want to uh, do some simple uh, classical mechanics analysis. The particle starts over here. It would have the momentum of uh, square root 2m e minus V0, right? And when it goes over here, it the, the momentum of 2m e, the square root of 2m e. And then again, it will have the same momentum value because the potential goes back to V0. And as we can see, there's a full transmission of particles because at no point in, the, in its travel from left to right, the, there's negative kinetic energy. So full transmission of particles. Now, if we were to uh, use quantum mechanics to look at the picture, we will go back to the solutions of the Schrodinger equation, okay? which, which I expect you to have the ability to rearrange them and write the solutions, uh, which you know, should be fairly easy. So I would drop that uh, from the lesson. And these are the solutions that we get, okay? So as you can see, uh, the solutions are all oscillating as you can see from the e to the i k1x and e to the minus uh, i k1x. Now I've written the full solutions over here. Uh, the, the domain of x for which they are valid and k1 and k2, okay? As we know, k2 is when there's no potential. So k2 is square root of 2me divided by h bar, but for k1, where there's the potential v0 is given by the respective value. These, again, are the waves number that correspond to the solutions over here. We should also know the physical meaning of these individual solutions because uh, these two correspond, these two correspond to waves, or these three correspond to waves that travel from the left to the right, and these three correspond to waves that travel from the right to the left. Okay, now, I would want to cancel out this wave over here, right? Remember, I said that you can cancel out certain wave solutions, or sorry, certain solutions to the individual uh, solutions to the showing the equation, okay, such as the, this E and this E over here, based on the context of the problem. Now, we know for here, 
that as the particle goes to this side of, of the potential, none of them will be reflected this way. You know, there will be only particles that get transmitted over at this point, x equals to a divided by 2. I know that there can be reflection and transmission at these points where x is e uh, equal to minus a divided by 2, but where x is equal to a divided by 2, I know that they all get transmitted over. We can't have a particle uh, or the wave-like nature of the particle going from right to left in this region over here, meaning to say that I can cancel this solution over here, but I'm not going to do that because I want to sketch the probability densities and really look at the picture based on the probability densities okay so now again to carry on our quantum mechanics observations what do i need as always i need the transmission and reflection coefficients now uh, let's see whether we can get them right this time okay transmission coefficient remember it's the intensity of a certain wave over the intensity of the certain wave and we square that Okay, so this is the problem that I have. The particle starts on this side over here, and I want to find out the ratio of particles that can tra that get transmitted over. Now, that will correspond to which solution? Okay, it's one of the six, and it's obvious that it should be this solution over here. Okay, these are the particles that can get, get transmitted over. So my type would be an E, the, the intensity of the wave that passes the point X uh, equals to A divided by 2. And again, the particles that are incident to the potential well, okay, it's really the particles that incident to the point x uh, is equal to minus a divided by 2, so I got the magnitude of e squared divided by the magnitude of a squared for r is none other than the magnitude of b squared uh, divided by the magnitude of a squared. Okay, now I know that sometimes it's a bit difficult for us to analyze this picture because we know that we, we, it's hard time explaining what happened to these solutions over here. But um, it's okay because really the probability densities will solve that for us. When it comes to dealing with the transmission and reflection coefficients, just think of the the waves or the waves corresponding to the particles that exit and enter the certain problem, okay, or the certain um, area of the potential. In this case, what is interesting is these points over here. X is equal to minus a divided by two, and x is equal to a divided by two. So we know the wave exits the potential well. This will go into the transmission coefficient to the top, and uh, the waves that enter the to the well is a. Okay, so the intensity of the waves that is to the well is given by A. So that's why that goes to the bottom. For the reflection coefficient, it's just B because that's what uh, that's the way that gets reflected. You don't need to take into account what happens in the center over here as far as the transmission and reflection coefficients are concerned. Okay, you don't need to worry about that. But you need to worry about that when we are dealing with the probability densities which will move swiftly along right now. Okay, so let me just uh, erase this away. Okay, by the way, um, to calculate this transmission and reflection coefficients and thereby going to the analysis of T and R, you will want to use the, the conditions, the continued conditions, which maybe we should just write now, okay? So, with the continued conditions is that when x is equal to minus a divided by 2, remember, what, what are they? They are the, the solutions to the Schrodinger equation, they are equal to each other, okay, and as well as their first derivatives based uh, on the coordinate axis. So, for x is equal to minus a divided divided by 2, um, the continuous equations don't apply to the, these solutions over here, okay, the linearly independent solutions, they don't apply to them. The linearly independent uh, uh, solutions apply to the transmission and reflection coefficients, but as far as the, the continuing conditions are, is concerned, we use side 1, side 2, and side 3. We will take the linear combination of both solutions. So when x is equal to minus a divided by 2, we got psi 1 is equal to psi 2, and the first derivative of psi 1 in terms of x is equal to the first derivative of psi 2 in terms of x. When x is equal to a divided by 2, we got psi 2 is equal to psi 3, and basically it's the same thing. Okay, psi 2 divided uh, psi is equal to the first derivative of psi 3 uh, with respect to x. So these are our continuing equations. We will use this to manipulate uh, these equations over here, get this, that, that set of equations, which I believe is 4, and thereby solving the, the intensities of the wave and getting our transmission and reflection coefficients, okay? But that's not what we're going to do, but we'll just leave that over there like so. Okay, so I'm going to erase this, and now we'll go uh, swiftly along to the probability densities, okay? Which is a bit co more confusing, but maybe we can understand uh, a lot more from it.